very little pilgrims come our days because we are separated from Jerusalem by an eight meter high wall. And uh, Bethany turned in, uh, yeah, remained a very, uh, yeah, actually dirty little uh, Muslim village, absolutely not attractive for pilgrims. Besides, pilgrims of our days are uh, hurrying all the time. They come for a very short time of six, eight, ten, maximum twelve days, putting maximum of a program and this minimum of a day. So they are rushing from one holy site to another holy site and Bethany, which is a pity, uh, stays aside from the usual pilgrim uh, route. It is a pity because this is actually uh, the place where Christ, being son of God, found friends. And he loved Martha, Mary, brother Lazarus, but also this place. This is the place where he came, he found home, where he was always welcome. So as not to prolong our evening too much, we'll start now. So let's please continue your your trapeze. Uh, I want to introduce to you a wonderful uh, individual, uh, a member of the Sisterhood of uh, Saint Mary Magdalene in our convent in Gethsemane, Jerusalem. Uh, Sister Martha is uh, originally from Germany. Uh, she, as I heard from her previous uh, talk, she converted when she was 21 years old. Uh, she speaks Russian uh, like a Russian. She speaks English like a, a well-educated European. Um, and uh, she's been in the Holy Land for, what, 14 years, I believe. Um, and she, she's doing a marvelous job running a school uh, for uh, young girls in the Palestine Authority, uh, which has, I think, something like uh, 450 or 475 students, but she'll give you more information on that. Um, the uh, site where the school is, is uh, in the place where Martha and Mary uh, met our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he entered Jerusalem for the very last time, uh, Bethany. And of course, um, uh, in uh, two weeks, we will hear the story of, of, of rising, uh, raising of Lazarus. So, uh, Sister Martha will give you an explanation on the, uh, the activities and the life of monastics in the uh, Holy Land in our days, and what are some of the difficulties that they have to uh, uh, encounter on a daily basis. So, with no further ado, just um, much to much for those. Thank you. Um, those of you who don't know which monastery I'm from, have a look at the pinboard there. The announcement about the trip to the Holy Land, it has a lot in its picture, St. Mary Magdalene Church, and it's exactly the convent I'm coming from. Um, I need to, to switch it on anyway. I have brought you a small presentation. My short, uh, trip was very uh, a short notice. Um, it has a very interesting yeah, story behind it. Um, you know that it, uh, our monasteries in the Holy Land, uh, there were two main times when donations are coming in from our church, from the church of God, uh, usually. So it's Christmas and Easter. This year we had one tenth of our, of Christmas donations coming in. So uh, me uh, being German and planning, going, doing all the, the finances in Bethany, um, we started to renovate our kitchen. And what uh, was planned quite cosmetic turned out, as it often goes, to something cosmic. 
uh, I mean, it, it was our house is quite ancient. It was built in 1909. So the furniture inside the kitchen is almost as old. Our children living with us started to open the cabinets with the doors. So we took the decision to change the cabinets. Then the ch once we took the furniture out, my sister approached me and said, Sister Master, I mean, um, we are living in the 21st century. Can't we have hot water in the kitchen? Uh, how, long, uh, how much longer do we need to boil the water on the gas in order to do the dishes? Okay, I'll look into it. We'll add it, we'll add it up. Okay, but we do, if we do the hot water, can't we do the switch? Okay, we'll do that too. And if we change the furniture as well, uh, anyway, then can't we have new refrigerators? Because defrosting them once a week is just turns in, yeah, on the long run, it's quite annoying. Okay, we'll have the new refrigerators. And I was all the time calculating. Yeah, if all the Christmas donations come in, we'll just make it. And then they said, okay, but we, if we buy the new refrigerators, will the electricity supply will be enough in this old house? Of course it wasn't. So we ended up, once the donations uh, didn't arrive, with uh, furniture taken out of the kitchen, um, hot water put there in the walls, electricity as well, but running out of the money altogether for everything else. So I went up to the head of the mission and said, okay, Father Roman, you need to help out. Borrow me some money, I'll pay you back. He said, in the mission, it's the same. The situation is the same. I can't. You need the kitchen, you go to the other side of the world. And here I am. Yes? Did you, uh, did you count how much you want to have? For, for the kitchen, we need to, all together, it turned out to be 30,000. Uh, dollar. Yeah, but what about building? You are telling that the, it's old. Yeah, the, the roof will be very expensive. We are calculating it's not going to be less than $80,000, $90,000. And this is something that we are going to, to start raising from now on, little by little, you know, just to continue. However, I, I just mentioned that the pilgrims are uh, self, um, very rarely aware of how they are protect, protecting us over there. And uh, I mean, you see this announcement that there was a, a, a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Knowing now this information, you should um, push, push your, your priests, you know, to organize perhaps not one pilgrimage, every two years, but at least one pilgrimage a year, or two pilgrimages a year, uh, in order to come out. Because Holy Land is also, I mean, um, just imagine, there is just one percentage percent of Christians living in the Holy Land, which is the place on earth where it is the core of our faith. Everything what is important for us happened in that spot on our planet. And uh, uh, this one person, beside the fact that they are still uh, in between uh, and trying to hang in and to not leave this piece, uh, piece of land, piece of, piece, yeah, in this land, also we in the monasteries who have all foreign passports, uh, as long as we live in the Holy Land, we receive from Israel just one year visa. We are not entitled to, we, we don't have any rights in this country. We are not entitled to have any other, um, you know, a medical insurance, for instance. We are not entitled to have this. They are not giving us these rights. So, uh, in, in the worst case, once pilgrims stop coming, uh, uh, Israel will need just uh, two years to get rid of all the monks and nuns with foreign passports living there at the holy sites. And uh, I mean, Muslims are aggressive. Israel is perhaps less in the daily life, but um, uh, Israel is interested in tourism. Tourists come out, they are living in hotels, they are going shopping, they go to the Dead Sea, they uh, are sunbathing on the beaches, 
they spend money, so that's what, what's bringing profit. Pilgrimages, pilgrims are not uh, very welcome. They, when they come, they come on pilgrimages. They visit holy sites. They spend money there for commemoration, for souvenirs, for candles, for, for anything. So um, uh, we are just tolerated in, in this country as long as there is a need for pilgrimages. So for us to, to still stay there and, and hang in and to, to uh, you know, keep up all these holy sites for you to come and to visit, uh, and, and we need support. And uh, we, we had longer discussions, not only with the head of the, the mission, why uh, this year there was just one tenth of Christmas donations coming in. And it seems that there is a generation change in our churches, in our parishes, especially in uh, So the older generation, which uh, uh, felt very committed to uh, not only um, to royal Russia, but especially also to Holy Land and all our sites over there, who were um, uh, spending, sending money regularly, be it uh, $25 on Eastern and $25 on Christmas, but they were trying still to, to uh, you know, to help and support. So this generation is living. And it seems that the new generation, uh, most of them, do you know anything about Holy Land, young men? You do? That's good. Are you? <laughs> I went there when I was six. You went there when you were six. That's wonderful. Your parents deserve a crown. <laughs> but you are uh, actually uh, exception of the uh, regular rule. So you know, most of the children do know very little. And the young um, uh, volunteers, there is another opportunity to come as a volunteer. Uh, very little know that there is such an opportunity, and especially in Bethany, where we have the school and the girls and the boarding section, uh, young women are mostly welcome. We have uh, uh, just two years ago, I had a volunteer from uh, Boston with teacher education who went back and came one year later with a small group. She brought her parents, who priest and uh, a matushka, and uh, 10 people, young people at the age from 25 to 35. They came for 12 days, and uh, they didn't rush as regular pilgrims do. Uh, pilgrims of our days do rush too. They come for, for a minimum of day, age 10, maximum 12, and they push in this minimum of day, maximum of program. You know, they rush from one holy site to another holy site, and if it's a big pass of 50, then the, tw the first 20 do understand where they are and what they commemorate, and the last 20 try to do a selfie in order to come home, and you figure out where have I been, what did I see, uh, where should I go another time in order to realize, you know, what should I have felt over there. So, um, uh, this small group, they came for 12 days. In, in one half of the day, they were traveling. And in another half of the day, they were painting our school building. And they managed in these 12 uh, days. Uh, we, have a lot, we had a lot of challenges. But nevertheless, they painted two floors. And it was a big help. So we, stood, we could uh, start the, the new school here uh, with at least two floors painted. So, questions now, or anything that you are interested in? When did you uh, move to the Holy Land and why? I? Yes. Oh gosh, biography <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, it, all obedience. I didn't plan at all. I mean, uh, as he already, you already told everybody, I am a convert. I um, was baptized at the age of 21. And uh, two months later, I went on my first uh, uh, pilgrimage to a monastery. It was uh, astonishing for me to discover a modern German young woman that there were monasteries in the Orthodoxy. I was sure 
that uh, you know it's only uh, in, in uh, there are only Catholic monasteries and they are very close to extinction like dinosaurs because all the nuns were very old so it's just a little bit to go on and then it's over so I, very, I was very astonished to hear that there is a monastery and I went to France to Lesna and uh, you know I was astonished because the, the sisters were quite openly uh, sharing with me how they ended up in the monastery and they had all very interesting um, stories to tell so uh, from the very beginning I, I mean it's in my calendar I have this tendency to extremes obviously <laughs> so uh, back then it was just it was just an op a new way uh, of life to, to go and but I knew it was a big s step but, uh, first of all I knew that my parents would have a tough time I mean they they struggled already with my converting to orthodoxy and then uh, much more difficult was the decision because you know uh, the marriage is 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 uh, difficult enough but you can go out and have divorce in the worst case how do you divorce god you know once you're in there is no way out so um and i was struggling for uh, and and uh, praying for an answer and uh, i i was asking God to give me a clear answer. No innuendos. Yes, yes, no, no. He gave me such an answer. And I came back and uh, I, I went to a monastery five years later. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very Sovietish in that. I, uh, five years after I first entered uh, an Orthodox church, I was baptized. And five years after that baptism, I left the monastery. So uh, it turned out to be very difficult for my uh, parents. My mother was crying, saying, I thought the worst thing would happen to you in the orthodoxy, that is, that you would marry a priest and have ten children. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you marry a priest, please? <laughs> so there we were, you know, everything is comparison. Yeah, at that moment I, I, I wasn't able anymore, so I left and um, I wanted to go to Greece. Uh, and it was because once I graduated from university, I was so, you know, uh, tired from all this inner battle and struggle, monastery or no monastery, that I decided that I will go to a monastery for a longer period of time. So I told my parents that, uh, you know, I graduated, I'm tired from all this stuff, and I'm going to travel Europe. So uh, for three months, uh, I won't, uh, you know, contact them. And for these three, three months, I went to a monastery in Greece. And I wanted to go back to Greece, but I went, I went back to Germany to get a blessing. And I went to my spiritual father, and he uh, said, uh, I'm a married priest, so I can't bless what I don't know. Go to the archbishop. And he sent me to Vladika Mark. So when, we, when he listened to me, and he said, okay, I want you to... Uh, it seems that he had a plan, and I was just not smart enough to figure out that he had a plan. <laughs> uh, because I have had um, um, education, you know, teacher education, and uh, it seems that he was planning to put me in Bethany back then. So he said, in order to figure out if, if your decision is right or not, I would suggest that you go to a monastery for the same period of time, but where you understand the language. And there was my dilemma of obedience. Like, um, it's easy to, to be obedient to your spiritual father, whom you know, who knows you, whom you love, who loves you. That's easy. But how about to, to be obedient to the spiritual father of, the, of your spiritual father? Am I, do I need to? So I decided and I thought to myself, okay, if he tells me to go to Lesna, then I won't go. And he said, Gethsemane. So I figured out, okay, uh, it won't kill me. I will go for three months, he sent me off. And he, he was the overseer of the, our uh, monasteries in the Holy Land, so he would come out every two, three months. And when at the end of my three months, he came out and he said, so what's going on? I said, I want to go to Greece. He said, okay, stay for another three months. <laughs> and there was a dilemma okay, again, do I need to be obedient? So I thought, okay, another three months won't kill me as well. 
And the, the, the second sentence didn't finish 14 years later, you know. So once I was in the hook, I was in the hook. You know? <laughs> I was still hanging there. And I had just two years of contemplative life, uh, no, novice life in the monastery. And then they tortured me and sent off to, uh, to Bethany. Yeah, and there was a nice tradition in our monastery. In Bethany, there was always somebody Martha. So uh, some of us are just the first named and then sent, and then it's clear where, you, where they will send you. And some of us, like me, they are first sent and then named. And then it's clear that, that it's for a long time. <laughs> so uh, uh, this is how, uh, what they did. They first sent me to Bethany and then they taunted me and named me Martha. And then it was clear that it's you know, I, I was not aware that it would be as long. The previous sisters spent their seven years and it was considered incredibly long. So when on my eighth year, I approached uh, the abbess and I said, okay, Matushka, it's eight years. Uh, I think I do deserve a little bit, uh, you know, a change in my obedience and, and uh, uh, you know, a contemplative life. She said, very interestingly, she said, first Mother Martha, who established the community and then the school and the monastery, she died in Bethany. And I said, okay. She was, she was English. She was English, yeah. I said, do you want me to die in Bethany too? <laughs> so she said, okay, no, go away. <laughs> so I went away and I, don't, I, I, I was afraid to approach again, you know. So uh, it, it seems I have to hang in a little bit uh, longer as well. But I, after that, I found a place to be buried in Bethany. Uh, and I showed it to the children. I said, when I die here, because they will have uh, trouble to bring me into Jerusalem, you have to pass a checkpoint. So once I'm, I'm dying in Bethany, I'll, they will have to bury me in, in Bethany. And there was a nice story about it. We had a, a, a sister, Sister Macrina, and I was crying a lot about being marked. So she was trying to comfort me, and she was saying, uh, we have um, another cave where it was, uh, you know, for, um, uh, tell me, a burial, a burial place. Uh, there were just three, uh, you know, openings for, for, for to, to bury. So she was saying, okay, what are you crying about? You, okay, you'll die here, so what? We'll put you in this cave, and then let her eye die, and then we'll put me next to you, and then they will, the sisters will come, and they say, um, Martha and Macarena, Martha and Macarena, Martha and Macarena. At a certain time, they will forget, and they will say, Martha and Maria, Martha and Maria. <laughs> and then it's going to be a holy sign that they will pilgrim there because they will think it's the first Martha and Maria. <laughs> the only one that was the best. Yeah. 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 To be honest, I was not very comforted. But uh, it's a chance. <laughs> so. More of our, perhaps it's, uh, you think it's always, it's, it's not very often very funny. Um, especially with our children. Uh, you know, for, for most of them, uh, they end up with us and it's their only chance uh, to have a little bit of a childhood because they come mostly from really very difficult circumstances and uh, a chance also to have medical treatment. So all the donations that we gather, it's uh, also uh, we spend on our children. They are full in our care. It's not only clothing, but it's uh, and education, and it's also medical treatment. We have the last uh, girl that we uh, um, had. It's a six years old. She, her mother died in a car accident in summer, and she was in the same car. They had difficulty to cut them out on time, so she was kind of watching her mother dying. She arrived in the school in October, uh, being six years old, 65 kilos. I mean, I'm 60, and she was 65. Being very aggressive, she was uh, even uh, attacking people. So uh, the, the father came and he said, I don't know what to do with this girl. I gave them, we gave them first one week uh, trial period and then we extended, so now five months later she's 47 kilo. Uh, we still have disciplinary issues, but the girl is doing much, much better. Um, we have also other stories that are much more uh, serious uh, than just the medical treatment. Yes? Question? Uh, what 
we teach? It's a, a, it's a general school. General school. Yeah, we we uh, we are one of the best schools in in the in the area. That's why we have a waiting line to come in. Even uh, they try to sneak in. Uh, it, the the main language is Arabic. We teach English from kindergarten and Russian as a second foreign language for all girls from grade three. I guess I'm stopped. Yeah. <laughs> um. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Martha. It's just getting late, and, uh, uh, but I'm sure that uh, we could wait. We could spend more time, but we have services tomorrow morning, and uh, thank God, Sister Mar Mother Martha will be with us through Sunday. She's leaving uh, Sunday night uh, for Jerusalem, and we need to find a ride for her. Only problem is most uh, people want to be at the uh, uh, unction service, and her plane is at 11 o'clock from Dallas Airport. So what I can do is maybe bargain with you. <laughs> if I let someone who lives not far from Dallas Airport to be first in line <laughs> at the unction service, you can leave. No, 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 you, 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 you. <laughs> Peter, you're, you're ready to do that? Okay, so I will make a special announcement at the unction service that due to Mother Martha's Travels, you can go first with, with you already been to auction probably. Yes, yes. yes. So you go so, first, I go second. Yeah, but she needs to be uh, at the airport by nine o'clock. All right? Yeah, that's fine. Right. Okay, good. Um, as far as uh, us going to Jerusalem, we were there last time seven years ago, a large pilgrimage, and we're always ready to go, but uh, I'll, again, I'll bargain with you. If we go in five years, will you? you only if you are still at Bethany to show us around. Okay? <laughs> um, thank you very much. Uh, Sister Martha will be speaking uh, uh, at Trapez on Sunday as well. Uh, but uh, if you'd like to come again, please, please do, and I'm sure that she'll be ready to answer questions. And uh, if anyone would like to donate uh, uh, something to uh, Mother Martha for her uh, activities for school. And, you know, the, the need is great. Um, they have to uh, heat their own water, to wash dishes, to do the laundry, and uh, they need to save water to drink, drinking water as well, right? It's, uh, it's a very parched land. Um, you know, we had trouble getting our donations that we collected last Palm Sunday to Jerusalem for a number of reasons. I won't go into the technical um, areas. Sister Martha can uh, explain better, but uh, we have uh, over $10,000 left over from last year. This is not counting Marina, what, uh, what um, um, Antonia collected, or the money we collected at Palm Sunday. And we will be giving uh, Sister Martha 5000 of that to take with her. Um, and. Uh, another 5,000 to the ecclesiastical mission. But uh, if you would like to add to that, uh, please do. Uh, you can, uh, we'll, we'll make a collection Sunday. If you anyone would like to make a donation today, you can just give it to me. I will pass it on uh, to Mother Martha. Uh, and um, that'll be good. So thank you. Hmm? Hmm? Yes, and also if you would like to uh, make commemorations, uh, uh, to pray for your loved ones, uh, you can also do that by Sunday uh, at home or at, in church uh, and pass them on and uh, Mother Martha will be glad to take them with her uh, and pray at the place where Martha and uh, Mary uh, met our Lord and also perhaps maybe she'll go to the newly renovated Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, at Pascha time and commemorate us there as well. Um, so. Also, thank you to everyone who brought the food. The food was delicious, very plentiful. Matryka Cindy, thank you for organizing this. And uh, if you have a, a please stay and, and help clean up a little bit too. That would be greatly uh, appreciated. And I think now we can pray and uh, be on our way. Thank you. We Deprive us not of thy heavenly kingdom. Thou didst obtain us among the disciples, O Savior, and gave us the 
and peace come unto us and save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, but now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Благословен Бог, милый питай нас от своих богатых дров своей благодати с человеколюбием, всегда ныне и присно и во веки веков. I mean, she, it's a, she's a little bit scared to come back because she was taken out seven years ago, being, still being a child. So she grew up in a little bit different country than she is in Palestine. But um, so those are the situations that we sometimes, or sometimes often, more than sometimes, face.